Lord is a question of supply and demand. If you really yearn for God's blessings, he will reveal himself to you in an instant. You have no need to fear. You need neither art nor science, nor study nor erudition, but you do need faith, purity and devotion. Combine all the love you cherish towards worldly objects, relatives, property, wealth, and then apply this combined force of love to God, and you will realize him in an instant. To serve God and mammon at the same time is impossible. It is impossible. Remember that, dear Chellers. You cannot enjoy the bliss of the self and the sensual pleasures in one and the same cup. Just as you cannot have light and darkness at the same time. The Lord demands your whole heart. Reduce yourself to zero before God. Only then will God completely take care of you and guide you. Only then will your surrender be complete. Forget your own little interests, your own little longings, your own desires. You will attain the bliss of the Supreme Self. Crucify and sacrifice the lower self. If you wish to have union with God, empty your egoism. You will be filled with God. Lose your personality and you will find the divine life. You will realize God in that very second. In all well-known religions and faiths, the belief of the descent of divine power on earth in the form of an avatar. This is the descent of Godhead in man. A Messiah or an apostle has been generally held and recognized in one way or another. But one may feel amused to know that of all the countries in the world, India has from ancient times, as all the scriptures show, held a strong and one may say unique faith in the reality of Avatar. Unique in the sense that while other Western countries and religions, this belief has not even stamped itself upon their minds. In India, it has taken firm root in the consciousness of the race. It has been presented to the West as Christian dogma. Without any basis, in the reason, general consciousness, and attitude towards life. As all existence may be viewed as a manifestation of God, because who is the only existence, and all else is but a fragment of that reality, and therefore every being is in part, or in some way, a descent of the infinite into the apparent finiteness of name and form. But it is a veiled manifestation. There is a gradation between the supreme being and the consciousness of the finite. The avatar is a dual phenomena of divinity and humanity. The object being to exemplify the possibility of the divine manifested in the human being so that man may see what that is and take courage to grow into it. It is also to leave the influence of that manifestation vibrating on the earth nature and the soul of that manifestation presiding over its upward endeavor. We see in the life of Jesus Christ that his first watchword was not this life, but something higher. Note that, listeners, not this life, but something higher. He had no faith in this evanescent world and its various belonging. The best commentary of the life of a great teacher is his own life. Jesus had no family ties. He had no sex ideas. He was a soul. Nothing but a soul working the body for the good of humanity. He had no other occupation, no other thought except one, that he was a spirit. 
with this marvelous vision, he had found out that every human being, whether a Jew or a Gentile, rich or poor, whether sinner or saint, was the embodiment of the same divine spirit as himself. Therefore, during his whole life, he was calling upon men and women to realize their own spiritual nature. Know ye, the kingdom of heaven is within ye. Know ye, the kingdom of heaven is within you. He never talked of this world and of this life as an enduring abode of peace and happiness. Rather, he wished to give this world a push and drive it forward and onward until the whole world had the effugent light of God. The scriptures say, the great children of divine light who manifest that light themselves, who are light themselves, they being worshipped become one with us and we become one with them. As man advances spiritually, he begins to feel that God is omnipotent, that he is omnipresent that he must be in him also, and that he is not a distant God, but clearly the soul of all souls. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The kingdom of heaven is within you, so declares Jesus of Nazareth. If we clean the spirit of the dirt and dust of our selfish and impure desires, the kingdom of heaven is ours. It is our birthright because we are children of God, our eternal Father, and as such we are heirs to immortality. This was the great lesson taught by Jesus. Another lesson taught by that messenger of God was renunciation. It forms the common basis of all religions of the world. A rich young man asked Jesus, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up thy cross, and follow me. And the rich man was sad at that. He went away grieved. We are all more or less like that young man. In the midst of our joys and pleasures of worldly life, we forget the real purpose in life. Give up all that thou hast, and follow me. Whosoever will save his life will lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. This was the ideal preached by Lord Jesus, and this has been the ideal preached by all the great prophets of the world. The great ideal of Sanias and of the Gita, which means desirelessness and unselfishness, pure and simple, when a man has no ego or sense of mind left in him, he remains pure spirit or atma. In that man abides God himself, for in him all self is gone, crushed out altogether, so only God's will dwells in him. That is the ideal man. That ideal has to be reached by each and every one. It may be tomorrow, or it may be years later, many lifetimes later. But sooner or later, this is the way, it is the only way to enjoy that heaven on earth, which is your birthright. Christmas is known to all men and women over the whole world as the memorable day of the birth of Jesus, the Saviour. Though it is true that Christmas is thus celebrated as the day of the advent of Christ into the world, yet it also symbolises a very deeply significant truth 
of the spiritual life. Jesus Christ lived and symbolized divine consciousness. He is the very personification of divinity. He was born at a time when ignorance, superstition, greed, hate, and hypocrisy prevailed upon the land. The leaders were arrogant, unrighteous. The people were avaricious, indolent, and heedless. Purity was forgotten. Morality was neglected. They were intent upon worshipping mammon rather than adoring God. There was no idealism. And in the midst of these conditions, Christ was born. He worked a transformation in the lives of the people. He gave a new and a spiritual turn to the life of man. There came a change upon the land. People started upon a new way of life. Thus, a new era dawned for the world. There is conditions of darkness, impurity, and materialism that prevailed before the coming of Christ signify to you the inner state of the seeker's personality before discrimination had dawned upon him and before the spiritual awakening had taken place. And in that period, the seeker has no thought of God or higher spiritual life. He is immersed in the pursuit of the material things of this external physical world. He is the slave of his senses. He has no spiritual ideal in his life. He is desire-ridden. Arrogance, avarice, sensuality characterize his personality. He lives a life of lust hate, greed, deluded attachment, pride, jealousy, and he suffers much misery. In fact, he lives in a real little hell on earth, and if this state of thing is to cease, and the seeker enter into a new life of spiritual aspiration, purity, and devotion, then the Christ spirit must take its birth within his heart. That is the real Christmas, when the divine element begins to express itself in the heart of man. From then on, light begins to shine where darkness was before. Ignorance gives way to the beginning of wisdom. Impurity is replaced by purity. Hatred ceases and love begins to blossom forth. In his innermost core, man is essentially divine. But upon this field of human personality, two forces keep acting. They are the forces of good and evil, light and darkness, divine and undivine. They both operate in the human consciousness of man. And to completely overcome and eradicate the undivine elements and to fully manifest the supreme divine element in all its radiant light and glory, it is to be achieved through the living of the Christ life in the utmost faithful detail. This is spiritual life. This is yoga. This is Sadhana. This is the real Sadhana. This is the method of self-realization. This is the great path to lead to immortality, supreme bliss, and eternal peace. If the Christ life is to be lived, first of all, the child Christ has to be born in us. Then only the real spiritual life begins for the aspirant. And the first manifestation of the divine urge in the form of spiritual life, spiritual aspiration, and the recognition of the supreme ideal signifies the birth of the infant Jesus within the seeker's brain. You can't imagine the glory. There are no words to describe this glorious event. From hence starts the living of the Christ life in all its spiritual details of sublime purity. 
faith in divinity, mercy, compassion, love, selflessness, desirelessness, prayerfulness. Hence starts the life of earnest yoga and sadhana, of self-restraint and simplicity, of unbroken serenity and peace, balance of mind, and flinching courage in the face of all oppositions, and perfect dedication to the worship of God through the service of man. This is the spiritual implication within of the Christmas that is celebrated without. With the advent of this Christ spirit within the heart of the seekers, all desires come to an end and they are replaced by pure, higher divine aspiration. Spirituality overcomes materialism. You break free from slavery of the senses. You begin to live a new life, a divine life of purity, love, renunciation, humility, non-attachment and selflessness. Your life becomes sublime like the life of Christ. You begin to live a life of complete faith and dependence upon God. You always think of God, talk of him and live for him. Helping others becomes a real joy to you. You become a living witness of the divine. All your life's activities flow towards God and God alone. Empty thyself and I shall fill thee is divine admonition of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven within is for the lowly in spirit. This true humility and self-effacement are the beautiful harbingers, the dawn lights, as it were, that herald the break of the joyous new day, the advent of the new era of the spirit and life of the divine. When they appear within you, then the holy Christmas takes place. This is a new birth. This is the birth into the divine life. It was the secret of this birth that centuries ago, Lord Jesus sweetly explained to the good Nicodemus, the good man did not quite understand what precisely Christ meant when he taught that a man must be born again if he is to attain the kingdom of God. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. Then it was that Christ explains that this birth is inward, not of the body, but in the spirit. Such inner spiritual birth is essential if the supreme is to be attained. If full bliss is to be experienced, real rejoicing takes place only when Christmas has come. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Such was the call of Jesus, not only to his disciples, but to all those whose hearts had ignited the spark of spirituality through his gospel, a gospel that was not confined to an ordained view, a gospel that was not exclusively bequeathed to any particular church, but which was essentially meant for the entire world. Within every man there is a spark of divinity that can never be snuffed out. Whatever may be the conditions in which he lives, whatever may be the state of his evolution, there is hope even for the worst materialist. The kingdom of heaven is for all. Only man has to reach the feet of the Lord by dying to his lower nature 
and treading the path laid out by Jesus, the good shepherd. Run away, run away from that diabolical little self. Run away, run away from that diabolical little self. Oh, what misery, oh, what pain. Oh, what misery, oh, what pain. In that little self, in that little self, come out of that cage of flesh. Come out of that cage of flesh and be resplendent. In thy name, glory, in thy name, glory, in thy name, glory. Run away, run away from that diabolical little self. Run away, run away from that diabolical little self. Oh, what misery, oh, what pain. Oh, what misery, oh, what pain. In that little self, in that little self, come out of that cage of flesh. Come out of that cage of flesh. And be resplendent in thy name, glory, in thy name, glory, in thy name, glory. Within every man, there are potentialities for good and evil. No one is absolutely good. And no one is incorrigibly evil. Though evil tendencies generally predominate in the life of man. But God has given him the power of discrimination. Jesus has shown him the way. And it is for him either to grow in goodness or to degenerate into evil ways. Whatever man soweth, so does he reapeth. Through evil comes evil, through good comes good. Untruth, hatred, vice bring unhappiness to their perpetrator and to those on whom these are applied or employed. Truth, love and goodness bring happiness, peace and well-being to those who resort to these and also to those to whom these are directed. A touchstone of discrimination and the capacity to act as per the right judgment beside the destiny of man. This discrimination is the light within man, the will to live by the commandments of Jesus, the courage to do what is just and right, even though it be the detriment of one's creature comfort or material good, the purity of heart that allows no ill will towards even the wrongdoer and does not submit to an impure motive, constitute the light within man. The light within man is also that tremendous power of his mind which has enabled him to delve deep into the mysteries of nature and harness its boundless potentialities. The power that he can employ for his good and the good of all, or for his ruin and the destruction of all. Hence Jesus saith, that the candle is not lit to be put under the bushel, but on the candlestick. Unhappily, the world is engaged in bitter rivalry to surpass each other in the power of destruction. True, man is also engaged in harnessing the power of nature for his good, but that attempt is very feeble and limited when compared to his efforts in the other direction. And even this attempt is directed in a very partial way with a little consideration for universal good. Selfishness dominates the life of man. He does not want to share the God-given bounties with others, but only for himself, his country, and his friends. Political, social, economic conflicts blur his vision. The spirit of charity is throttled by doctrinaire approach towards everything. The candle which Jesus wanted to put on the candlestick, the altar of God, so that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. The world is being set under a bushel to set fire to the house of man. But human wantonness can never reign supreme. Everything mundane has to end. Materialism alone cannot sustain life. The power of spirituality, though very feeble in the world today, is bound to succeed. Truth must triumph, not falsehood. The light is within you, 
It is for you to wake up to its awareness, to open the portals of your inner recesses through moving the clutches of the lower nature and to allow that light of inner purity to illumine your entire being, seep through and beyond you towards all humanity. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. One cannot be enlightened and yet inactive. Man must work for the world of his fellow beings. Through service and love alone can one enter the heart of another. Through service and love alone. Service and love can only be powerful when the heart is pure, when the mind is cleansed of the dross of ignorance. May the blessings of Lord Jesus Christ be upon you all, and may the light of Lord Jesus Christ kindle your heart and mind and energize your body to serve, love, give, meditate, and realize God in all mankind all over the world and thus enable you to live a life purely divine.